You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something to me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of A Masquerade in the Woods. I just swallowed down the wrong pipe, so <clears throat> I just got done having a coughing fit, so if I sound a little choked up, that's why. Anyway, let's go ahead and delve right back into the horror, shall we? Alarm Shan, you are up, and let's go! Alright. <clears throat> Always made it when I was over. Are you vegan? River looks at me with an expression I can only imagine says, Really? I guess I could have figured that without asking. Judging by your species, I'm guessing you're not. I don't think that has anything to do with my species, but then again, I hadn't even considered the possibility that it might be your species related. No. Some more, some rustling from a room down the hall makes my ears perk. Sounds like Lucas is having a hard time finding that rag. River sighs. Look, I know your first... Was this your first? River studies my confused expression thing carefully. I have no clue what she's talking about. Yeah, this was your first. You don't have the eyes for it. What? I know your first time is always tough. I don't want you grieving over your actions, though. You did what was necessary to survive. Not everyone can say the same when they find themselves in that situation. Even if she's got a point, I can't let go of the guilt that I took someone's life. I can't take that back. I'm a killer. River pulls out a small plastic bottle from the bag and sets it down on the table, along with a roll of bandages. And as for that sewer rat, he's better off dead. You did all the blackmail, you did all of blackmail a favor with that one. I sigh and look out the window at the setting sun. Did you really deserve to die? River stops and looks at me as if I just insulted her personally. The sound of something falling in another room, accompanied with a loud grunt, breaks the silence. Found it! Lucas exclaims. I look toward the door doorway, but the river grabs my forearm, making me turn back to her. She runs her, she runs her thumb through my through the fur. Those pink eyes bore into me as she speaks in a hushed tone, her expression almost angry. You're no stranger to death. Stop pretending you are. You stared it in the eyes more than once. You might not have killed before, but those missing claws? They're just like these. Her claws trace the outline of one of my deeper marks to emphasize her words. Proof of survival. She lets go of my arm just as Lucas re-enters the kitchen, holding up a small white towel in one paw. I pull back, shocked, not knowing how to respond to that. Right, let's have a look at that paw. Undo your bandages. Her tone immediately lightens, speaking as if our short conversation never happened. Lucas hands her the towel. I just stand there for a moment while River picks up the bottle and pours some of its contents into it. Lucas notices me not moving and speaks up. Uh, you want some help taking those off? He asks in a gentle tone, in sharp contrast to River previously. Uh, the, 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 the bandages, I mean. No, I, <clears throat> I can do it. I gulp and use one of my claws to untie the bandages. Guess they have their uses. Shave them off. Shame I've lost two already. The, bandages, the bandage falls to the floor to reveal my bruised fingers. Claws missing, replaced by empty sockets. River gets down on one knee to have a closer look. Doesn't look infected, at least. Considered a miracle you didn't catch some disease in that basement with the amount of open wounds you got. River grasps my wrist and raises the cloth. You gonna behave this time, or am I gonna have to ask Lucas to hold you down again? What? I'm gonna clean it. It might sting a little. I look up at Lucas standing next to me. He tries to give me a reassuring smile. Even though I know it's childish, I reach my right paw out towards him and ask, Would you hold my hand while she does it? Lucas looks at my paw, confused. Then he practically chokes on his own breath, eyes widening. He looks down at my paw, then back up at me. Aw. A few seconds pass. I shouldn't have asked. Out of the corner of vision, I see River roll her eyes with a sigh. She elbows Lucas's thigh and he jumps again. Oh, yeah, uh, sure. He slowly reaches out and carefully takes my paw in his. And once again, I'm fascinated by the size of it. My paw practically disappear it disappears in his. Ready? I swallow. Ready. <laughs> oh my. Ouch. Hold still! I can't! It hurts so bad! You're gonna get a fucking infection! Here, just hold my hand! One second, y'all. Water time. Oh, yeah. There we go. I swear I'm gonna kill him. I did this myself, Miles. He sure as fuck isn't innocent in all this. Please don't go after him. This is my fault. I can fix this. No, I'm not letting you apologize for to me to him for some stupid shit he fucking did again. H he's good to me. I just have to... You can't keep doing this to yourself, Tiny. I mean, look at this. You deserve so much better than this. Now hold still. Just squeeze my hand when it gets too much. I 
I squeeze his paw hard, gritting my teeth, wanting to recoil, but she holds my wrist tight. Somewhere in the back of my mind, I hear that old, nasally voice again. Sit still, or I might botch it. But it's not him doing this. No, it's because of him that she's doing this. Ah. Oh, yeah. That guy, George. Yeah. It's all right. You're doing great. Lucas whispers, giving my paw a reassuring squeeze back. River keeps dabbing the towel against my stinging fingers. Stinging fingertips. Standing this close to him, the smell of cinnamon is a lot more potent. Not overbearing, but noticeable. I assume it's some sort of perf perfume or shampoo. Have you informed the others yet? Yeah, I called Shepard and let him know what happened. And? And he wanted to meet. Did he specify when? Tomorrow night. And he wanted to meet you. Lucas turns his head to me while saying the last bit. Me? Why? Debriefing. He's going to want to question you about what happened. Having already, having already had to retell it once, I can't say I'm super excited about doing it again. Sh should I be worried? About Shep? Yeah. Probably. River? What? I'm just being honest. Lucas sighs. Shepard can be a bit... Of an ass. Lucas doesn't object. Who's Shepard, anyway? He's, a uh, He helps out with some guidance, and... He's the head of this little operation these freaks are running. Are there are more of you? Four in... Four in total. Three. I look down at River while she looks up at Lucas. Don't count me into all this shit. I might help you whenever one... Help out. I might help out whenever one of you idiots gets hurt, but I'm not part of the group. Sorry. River just shakes her head and gets back to work. Eventually, she puts the cloth down and starts wrapping fresh bandages around my fingers. <sighs> she takes a quick look at my right wrist and my head as well, determining it looks fine. I did, however, have to endure disinfecting my forehead as well. Lucas, sta Lucas stayed by my, by my side the entire time, holding my paw. It was comforting. Once she's done, she stands back up and puts her things back in her bag. The sun is finally set now, the only light outside coming from the street lamps below. Make sure to rest. Use your left paw as little as possible, and next time someone comes knocking, you hide. Understood? Why? She just zips up her, her backpack. I look up at Lucas, who looks back down at me. Because of your missing claws, uh, they're probably being looked into as we speak. I hadn't even thought of that. I might be involved in a murder investigation. Shouldn't we just go to the police and tell them what happened in that case? You're not from around here, are you? She hoists her bag over her shoulder and turns to me, raising an eyebrow. Trust me, confessing to the police is the worst thing you could do right now. There's a reason this maniac spends his nights running around playing dress-up. She points a thumb at Lucas, who seems to avert his gaze. And just be happy he's the one who found you, and not those pigs. Is that racist? Before I have time to contemplate it, she's already by the door. Take care, Cody. And Lou? Lucas, who's been averting his gaze ever since the dress-up comment, looks up. Yeah? She calls him Lou? He's a raccoon. Raccoons are omnivores. Feed him something better than that crap, alright? Lucas seems to cower back a little under the light scolding, his face scrunching up slightly and his eyes falling back to the floor. Right, I will. And she opens the door and disappears through it. Lou, huh? Lucas sighs, his chest rising and falling shifts his shoulders, making me realize we're still holding paws. I cough awkwardly and let go, to which Lucas reacts by looking down at me, then our connected limba, and then our connected limbs. He inhales sharply, like he just put his paw on a hot stove top, letting go and shoving his paws in his pockets. His gaze returns to the door. S sorry I can't help but chuckle. Well, I like the soup. Give me that soup. We spend another hour or so reheating and eating some more soup. I reiterate that I do, in fact, like his cooking. After finishing up the rest of the food, I realize I still don't know how to get home. I'm gonna need some time to figure this all figure all this shit out. Hey, Lucas? Lucas looks over from putting the dishes in the sink. Would it be alright if you stayed if I stayed here a few nights? It's still I still don't really know what happened or how to get home. He turns the water off and turns around to face me, til tilting his head with a worried look. Did you uh lose your Did you uh lose your memory? Yeah. Easier than trying to explain what actually happened. Hell, I still have no clue what actually did happen. Oh, I mean, yeah, of course you can stay. I wouldn't mind. 
His muzzle curls up in a light smile. It'd give me more time to try to figure this whole mess out. And his entire face lights up. His ears spike up and he gasps. Oh, we can make popcorn and watch a movie together. Like a sleepover. He immediately turns back around and begins rustling through some cabinets. I'll get some popcorn. I swear I have some here, somewhere. His tail wags from side to side excitedly. I didn't know this timid, this timid canine could be so enthusiastic. He suddenly freezes and his ears lower, his tail stopping. He slowly turns back around to look at me with, with, with concern on his face. If you don't want to, of course. I can't help but smile and nod. Maybe he's warming up to me. I get the feeling figuring all this out would be a lot easier if he did. Same goes for me, I suppose. I think I'd like that. His grin grows so large it basically stretches from ear to ear. He quickly turns back around to dig through the cabinets again. I know, I, I know just the movie. Why don't you go turn the TV on? I chuckle and get up. He sounds so excited. I pick up the remote off the coffee table and press the big red button at the top, taking care to watch my bushy to watch my bushy tail. I sit down on the edge of the couch. The TV quickly comes to life, showing an avian of some kind wearing a suit, sitting at a desk. To her left is a picture of a house with yellow tape covering the door. My stomach drops. The body of a 52-year-old male rodent was discovered in his home this afternoon on the outskirts of Black Mill. Authorities say the house, located near Black Mill Factory... You should be able to find the external hard drive I have plugged into the... I turn it back off just as Lucas comes wandering over towards the couch. I just sit there, staring at the now black screen, the image of that house and the police tape ingrained in my mind. Is everything okay? No. Yeah, did you find the popcorn? I turn my head to him. Lucas looks down at me with a puzzled expression, and raises his left paw, holding a box that looks tiny in his grasp. He doesn't believe me. Well, we, uh, don't have to watch anything if you'd rather go to bed. The river told you to get plenty of rest and all. I put my paws into my face and rub my eyes. No, no. I just accidentally hit the power button. I I'd love to watch a movie. I put my paws back down on my lap and force a smile. Anything to distract me right now. What movie is it you wanted to watch? We're gonna go see Saw 2 at the movies. All right, let me drink some water, y'all. Mm. All right, then. Okay. No! Let go of me! You're trapped! No one's coming to save you! Wahahaha! <laughs> Wahahaha! <laughs> no, please, let me go! Help! Lucas sits to my right on the sofa, leaning forward, eyes fixated on the screen. The movie currently keeping him on the edge of his seat is called The Remarkable Slypaw, a superhero movie starring the same fox on the posters in Lucas's bedroom. Here comes the best part! He says giddily, almost fa almost falling forward with how into it he is. <sighs> it's... fine. It's your typical superhero movie, very similar to the ones I took, took Dad and Miles to go see a few years ago. The biggest difference being that all the characters are played by humanoid animals. A masked character steps out of the shadows. His cape waves in the wind, and the thug turns around to face him, flailing his arms dramatically to aim it at the cape fox. Slypaw! The woman exclaims as the heroic music swells. You! You're supposed to be a myth! The thug shakes in fear as Slypaw approaches him menacingly. The robber pulls the trigger, but Slypaw sidesteps it, swooping in and taking the thug down with two swift punches. Lucas mimics the sound effects perfectly on cue. The woman runs up and dramatically drapes herself over Slypaw's lap. Oh, Slypaw, my hero! Lucas slumps back on the couch with a wide grin, grabbing another paw of popcorn and shoving it into his muzzle. The rest of the movie goes by similar similarly, Lucas repeatedly telling me the best part is just coming up. And to be fair, it does get better over time. An hour into the movie, and I'm pretty drawn into it myself. It turns out the plot involves Slypaw stopping an evil police chief set on, set on taking over the city. A generic. Once the end credits start rolling, a familiar feeling starts bubbling up inside me. Lucas? Lucas in, the middle of sh uh, Lucas, in the middle of shoveling another pawful of popcorn into his mouth, turns to me and answers with his mouth full. Huh? He swallows a few times. He looks concerned again. Is it alright if I use the bathroom? Oh, of, of course, just down the hall on the left. Thanks. His gaze falls down on his lap, his claws fiddling with the popcorn in the bowl. I stand up and start walking towards the hallway. Before I reach it, though, I stop and turn back around. And thanks for showing me the film, by the way. I enjoyed it. Lucas looks up, a smile creeping across his face. His curled tail thumps against the couch cushion. I lift the lid and unzip my pants to do my usual business. But something's like not like the usual. 
My paw fills around my crotch and my pants. Wait a minute. I unbutton them and pull them down to my knees along with my underwear. My balls are still there, but just above that, in place of where my member used to be, is... Well... What the hell? I know I must have seen it earlier, but at the time, it just didn't register. How the hell do I leave myself with this? I try to take a step back, but my leg catches in my pants. Shit! Even though my tail makes a pretty good cushion for my butt, landing on it hurts like hell. I fall directly into the shower behind me. Rapid footsteps echo down the hall, followed by a light knock on the door. Cody, everything all right in there? It sounded like something fell. God damn it. My apartment walls are never soundproof, are they? Yeah, I, I just knocked something over. All good in here. The only thing that fell was my dignity. Didn't know, it could, didn't know it could fall much lower than it already had today. Laying in the shower gives me an idea, though. Actually, mind if I take a shower? Uh, oh, not at all. Should be an extra towel in the cabinet. I get back up and walk over, pulling my pants up as I do. I bend down in front of the cabinet and reach for the handle. Just as I'm about to open it, however, Lucas speaks up again in a distressed tone. Uh, actually, would you mind if I use the bathroom first? I stop. I guess it wouldn't hurt. If it's anything like bathing a pet, then I'm guessing cleaning fur is going to take a bit more effort than skin, and a lot longer, too. Alright, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks for a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!